Welcome to TTP, Turnbuckle Talk Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Dirty Blondes. Dirty Blondes is a bar located in the heart of Blackpool, famous for their banging tunes, cocktails and 18-inch pizzas. The only place to get pizza as big as your table across the Bad Coast. If you're ever in Blackpool, check them out. They're on Facebook and on Instagram. That's Dirty Blondes Blackpool. Welcome to TTP, Turnbuckle Talk podcast. I'm joined by one half the proclaimers. It's the Scottish stud, John Dugan. How are we doing? These are getting lost here. I know, I'm, I'm running out of Scottish things, honestly. Um, today we've got a special guest. We've got um, Ethan Edwards, who is uh, the general manager and part owner of Odyssey Wrestling. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. Hey, f- thank you for being on. How are you doing? Hi, hi, good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm a bit sunburned. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can tell I'm ginger, can't you? <laughs> Did you just look at it through the window and then that was it? Pretty much. <laughs> my, my, sick, my, my skin was just sizzling. <laughs> um, so let's get straight into it. Odyssey Pro Wrestling. It's a fairly new promotion. Um, mm-hmm. Tell me how it's come about and uh, yeah, we are rolling it. So Odyssey Pro Pro wrestling, um, to me, is the, the sort of next chapter in, in the history of Morecambe Wrestling. Um, but it, it goes beyond that as well. Um, so Morecambe Wrestling, you know, very famous from the World of Sport days, um, moving on through the um, FWA, um, the XWA, um, most recently Alpha Omega Wrestling, uh, ran out of Morecambe. Um, Target Wrestling took over for a little bit. Um, and when they decided to step back, um, myself and uh, a few of the guys um, that used to, to work with Alpha Omega, um, we, we stepped up and, and decided, you know what, we a special place. We want to um, we want to take advantage of this opportunity. Um, but that's led in such a weird, you know, space of time. Like as we were getting ready to run our first show, the pandemic hit. That put us back. Um, but then we're now looking at, you know, our, our debut show on August 7th, which is set sail. But then we're also looking at, um, we've got a Blackpool show coming up in September as well. So it's it's sort of evolved very quickly. Yeah. And like you said, you know, Morecambe, you know, has that kind of feel to it, that kind of special wrestling background. Mm. So, uh, yeah, and I mean, it's amazing that you've took over uh, Odyssey. Um, did you have much of a kind of wrestling background before you took over? So I have been, well, I've been a wrestling fan my whole life. Um, I, so when I was younger, um, I had four wrestling VHS tapes that I used to watch religiously. Um, it was WrestleMania 1, WrestleMania 2, WrestleMania, no, there were been five. So WrestleMania 1, WrestleMania 2, WrestleMania 3, WrestleMania 6, which was the Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan. Um and then in your house, mind games, nineteen ninety six, um, and then I just used to watch those, those on, on you know on repeat. And then you know, bit, I used to watch the WWF growing up, and um, it wasn't until twenty sixteen that I truly got into into the wrestling industry itself. Um, I used to do a lot of um, theatre performance um, in Morecambe and in Lancaster, and. and um, I sort of needed to take a break from that and I was looking to get that creative outlet and um, I thought well no I love wrestling so why, why can't I, I do something with that um, got in touch with the local promotion which was Morecambe so it was Alpha Omega at the time um, and just started helping out with them backstage and, and you know um, doing security garden for them like ushering and then I started doing um, the backstage interviews which they would play on YouTube and then play um at the start and end of the show and then from there I sort of start became a ring announcer um so I got to work for KOW very first of all uh based in Barrow uh who are an incredible bunch of people um then I started wrestling uh ring announcing for Alpha Omega um it then I think who else did I work for uh so there's TWA out of Darwin as well 
um, LWF and Chorley. Um, and I, I did a couple of shows for Target here and there as well. Um, so for me, it was very much around, um, I, I ring announced for, for a lot of stuff. And then with KOW as well, I was also the general manager um, for a, a, about a year or so as well. How hard is it to be a ring announcer? Because it seems like quite an quite a intense like, thing to do. To keep I mean, on... yeah, so it's, it's, yeah. I was very lucky that I had that theatre experience. So I was very much used to standing on a stage in front of a bunch of people and having to try and keep their attention. Um, <laughs> the main thing is knowing who, the stuff about the guys that you're about to announce. So I always used to like, like keep cue cards with me. Um, so I knew what was, what was going on. I'd have notes on there um about the guys and i'd also like take time to speak to them before the show and and, and find out look is there anything you want me to do and you not want me to do like is there a bit that you want to do um so for example two bit um i always used to go to him before a show um i would say right what what you know what is there anything particular you want me to say and he'd go yeah i mean you could do this but to be honest i'll probably just nick the microphone off you um <laughs> so every time <laughs> i just had to look shocked as he stole it off me and the inevitable <laughs> happened um, but properly warming your voice up as well, like that is a, a very big thing. Um, I the amount of times I've lost my voice after a show and then following going back into work on Monday and just oh, you're right, guys, talking like this. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, knowing you know the guys that you're talking about, very important, and um, yeah, properly warming up, which I think you don't really hear about a great deal, but you know, warm your voice up. Hmm. Did you did you usually know how the match was going to go? Or did you like to do it as if you didn't know? Um, I always I always had an idea of what was going to happen. Um, I would have liked to have not known, but I, I kind of needed to know how things were going to end so I could I could react in, in time. Um, mm. You know, <laughs> worst, worst case is the match finished and me just sort of sitting there going, uh, oh, is that it? Oh, cool. Right. Yeah. Hey, I need to win it. <laughs> um, you know, I always like to sort of um, capture the moment for the guys as well, because, you know, I, I, it, as it's recorded and, and stuff like that, I want them to celebrate. I want them to hear their, hear me shouting their names as, as they're celebrating. So mm. I was, although I, I did on a couple of occasions get lost in the action and, and try and sort of almost forget sometimes. Um, but I did have an idea of who was winning uh, most of the time. <laughs> Has there ever been a situation where you've just completely balls it up? Because it's, you know what I mean? There's a fine line on Ring and Oh, me. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I, wasn't the, I wasn't the best. I will, I will put my hands up to that. Um, my favourite... So I've... I'm not a big fan of, of announcing people's weights. Um, I, I just think we... we we put a bit too much pressure on that, and I don't know. I'm not a big fan of it. So um, there are places that do like you to announce people's weights. So mm. I'll go around and get everyone's weights and, and stuff like that as I'm having a chat with them before they go out. Um, but if I miss someone and I don't get a chance to talk to them because they're busy or, or whatever else, um, then I'll just make it up. I'll just have to, you know, I'll be like, right, uh, yeah, 170 pounds um, when they're like nearly 200. Um, so, you know, um, the other one is title matches. So anytime I, I, I've announced a title match, I always like to give it a bit of weight and a bit of, you know, a um, bit of something. Um, so I'll always, always do it in ring. Like I never, with title matches, um, always in ring for me. And there's been times where it's a case of, here's the challenger and the challenger. And I'm like, oh, I didn't announce the champion. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you, you go, go for it. <laughs> um, but it's, it's. I think anytime you make a mistake, you just got to own it. Like you, you can't, if you sort of stop and stutter and oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah uh, no, it, it, that's where it looks naff. Um, mm. If you own it and just go for it, then even if you have made a mistake, people will sort of ride it with you. Yeah. And then, so talk, let's talk about... Um, being a general manager as well because that must come with uh quite a lot of uh, responsibility and you know a lot of hard graph mm. um yeah so I, I, i've been very lucky um with odyssey pro wrestling in the sense that um i'm the general manager there uh, but i had chance to 
practice almost at, at KOW. Um, and <clears throat> I'm much more looking forward to my role with um, Odyssey Pro Wrestling just for the fact of as the general manager, I'll get to um, get on with some work backstage uh, rather than ring announcing at the same time, which is what I, I had to do with uh, Odyssey Pro Wrestling, uh, with uh, KOW. Um, it's being able to sort of, there's people that's always going to tell the line, um, but there's also people that, that are going to try and use that line as a chip, uh, triple job, triple board jump um, and just go far over it. And we want to, you know, um, win by any means necessary. And you've kind of got to do what the best thing for the fans is in that situation. So although I might not be happy with um, someone's cronies at ringside, you know what, that's going to make some, that's going to be more entertaining than me just booting them all out all the time. Um, mm. At the same time, you know, getting to make those match announcements and things like that is, is it's difficult because it's, it's, you want to make sure it's the right one, it's the right stipulation or it's the right person that's deserving of it or something like that. But at the same time, you want to make it, the fans excited about it as well. So it's it's announcing it in a way that um, will get the fans on board, and, and you kind of got a, a, right. So you have been a problem, and we need to sort something out about that. So next time you are going to go one on one with, and it's that big dramatic pause. And who could it be? Well, it's the guy that's just been in the ring with you. So. <laughs> but it's obvious who it's going to be but if you can draw that out and really make that yeah. that's, you know special then it, the the fans really buy into that so i think that's that's what makes a general manager so important is they really build hype for, for stuff going forward how far ahead do you plan stuff like that um so within reason i like to know what's happening for 12 months in advance ideally However, ideal doesn't always work. Um, things change in the moment. So sometimes it can literally be a case of, right, I know the plan for 12 months. I know where we want to start and I know where we want to finish. However, based on what just happened, based on how people reacted, based on any number of factors, that could change that night. It could give me, you know, I could be thinking about it for the next month. Um but yeah, it can. I like to know what's going on, but at the same time, it could change at any time. Hmm. There's a lot of that. Do you, do you listen to the feedback of the fans, and if they're really not liking it, or do you like to tease that that the, what they want to happen isn't going to happen yet, but it will in the long run? Yeah, I think like over time, like the, the, you you have to build to a crescendo, so. Um, sometimes the fans might not, might not be a huge fan of something in the moment, but by doing this, that will lead to this thing happening over here. Um, mm -hmm. And you can sort of see that in advance. And I, I've seen fans truly, truly hate someone. Like, just be like, absolutely. No, how can this guy be winning? How can this happen? How can you let this happen? <laughs> and it's a case of just, just let it over time. It will, it, you know, it, it we're moving the chess pieces. It's happening. Don't you worry, you know, um, so that in the long term, like that big roar of, you know, love and appreciation and that big pop at the end only happens because it's, it's built to it. You know, it doesn't just come out of nowhere. So there has to be the dark days for, for that big moment to happen. Mm -hmm. Just going back to your general manager, do you have a general manager um, I want uh, not costume, but outfit. You know that you always kind of wear. <laughs> um, style. I have I haven't quite developed my style yet. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, it it's one of those things where eventually it will click into place. Yeah. But I've done, you know, I've done I've done the the the, the branded shirt with the jacket, um, the the classic style. You know, the the, the, yeah. the general manager chic. Um, <laughs> I've done just a you know, nice shirt. I've done the suit. I've done, um, you know, try try different bits, and just it's just not quite fit me yet. So, mm. uh, you know, I'll keep trying. Um, I, I'm more than happy to make myself look stupid if it's 
you know, for the right cause. <laughs> so, um, you know, but I'll, I'll get there with it eventually. But, you know, it's, it's, it's about trying different things and seeing what works for each person. Is there, is there anyone in particular that, like, um, influences you and how you want to um, look when you're doing that role? Not really. I mean, the, I, I want to look like me. I want to look recognisable mm. as me. Um, you know, there is that preconception of, oh, a general manager has to be suited and booted and ready to go and, and look professional at all times and, and, and things like that. Um, but at the same time, they're, they're just people in this situation. So they, they need to look, depending on, on, you know, where your stance is on the fans, um, mm. you, you know, you need to look approachable or you need to look professional or you need to look, you know, it, it very, it, it varies depending on the, the, the presentation you want to give. Mm. Mm. I mean, I think Steve Austin just had his tie, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with, his, with his shorts and his knee braces on, yeah. and, then, and then the tie. I mean, I could do that around my head and just see how that goes for a bit. Just to... yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so then you've got is it your debut show, isn't it? Yes, yeah, de debut show for for Odyssey Pro Wrestling. We will be setting sail on uh, August the seventh. Yeah. So tell me about the process of that. Like, are you are you bricking it? Are you excited? I am. Um, Excited, I am bricking it. I am um, dubious. I am um, overconfident. I am I, I, just such a range of emotions going to it because it's it's been two and a half, three years in the making to get to this point. Um, mm. Because, as I say, we were ready to go once before, and then we had to stop because of the pandemic. Um, yeah. So, so things to be escalating to this point has been. It's, you know, it's, it's been hard in the sense of it's been like, oh, we just want to go do this and, <laughs> you know, bring this back. And But at the same time, we're in a, the best position we've ever been. You know, we I think we were ready before, but now we're like, so we've had so much time to prepare, so much time to improve and get better. Um, and we've not even run a show yet. So I'm so excited for that moment when, when we step out in front of the fans. How was the response being in Morecambe, just with the general public? Um, it's, it's been, it's been great really, because like the, the Morecambe, so we've got like a very set section of fans called the Morecambe Divas, um, that right. have been, <laughs> been around the Morecambe, you know, Royal Compressor for years. Um, and they're all really excited. I mean, at this point we've had tickets on sale for less than a week and I think we've sold 30% of our VIP tickets already. Um, so we're, we're, we're far ahead of, of where we were expecting to be already. Um, I, I just keep seeing you know, oh I remember doing you know going to see this with with my family or I remember you know I love taking the kids to this before or yeah you know it's such a I don't want to say it was like the biggest thing in in town but it was such a a core part of the town in a way because you know there would be two to three hundred people there you know mm -hmm. each show and they really bought in and they really invested and you know there's a catchphrase in Morgan but it's still real in Morecambe you know fans really buy in and they really um believe and and they are the reason why we're doing this in the first place you know it's it's always just seemed like such a for a while it just seemed like such a shame for Morecambe to not have its own wrestling promotion um that we just felt you know we felt compelled to do it because of them yeah I mean it's just good to have so many different British companies just rise up mm. it can only be good for British mm. wrestling um but another thing I was going to say, yeah, is Morecambe seems to be on the rise. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm going to sidetrack a second. Uh, the Bay, the series, yeah. absolutely amazing. A little fact that um, the houses, the prices went up mm. in Morecambe due to the Bay, which yeah. is just, which yeah, is yeah, just so bad. It's, it's nuts because Morecambe's always a bit like, Morecambe's one of these places where when, you li when you're there, you just think, oh, it's just, it's just Morecambe. What, what are you on about? But then, like, as, a, as you sort of grow up, you just start to see, like, how much of a diamond in the rough it really is. And we mm -hmm. really are starting to see that now, like, um, the Bay um, being be one of them. Um, it was quite funny because I've, I've not watched all of the Bay yet. I've fallen behind a little bit. Oh, it's good. Uh, it's really good. But there's, there's part of it. It's just that part of being the home, in, you know, seeing your hometown on TV. And yeah. it's like, there, there was one part where I was just like, what, what what's going on where they were they were on the promenade and they were like right come on let's go into this building 
and they turned to walk into the building um and then it shifted to the interior and i was like they've just walked down an alleyway that's not a door (laughs) what's going on you know so it's having to like separate yourself a little bit from the town Mm. to sort of not just be like well yeah i don't know whether you have got left to go that way not right (laughs) you know but then there's other things happening in morecambe as well like they're they're building a an eating project in morecambe they're hoping to get government funding to, to go ahead and build the eden in the north um in Morecambe. What's, on, what's that? Eden so um, in, in Cornwall, there's um, the, the Eden Project, which is the, the three big biodomes. Um, oh. And it's this big, massive tourist destination. Um, but they, they do a lot of like science, um, agriculture experiments and, and things like that there. Um, and they're bringing, um, uh, they're, they're going to open another one, or they're hoping to open another one in Morecambe itself. Um, I believe at the site of the old dome, um, okay, where we, they used to run the old wrestling shows years and years ago. Um, so it's gonna, it's just another thing that's sort of lifting the, the whole town, um, mm-hmm. as well. So it's really, really cool to see. It's good, it's quite cool. Yeah, what is your sort of target audience? Is it pretty much everyone, or are you more family, family oriented, so, or a bit? So, so Morecambe Wrestling has always been family-friendly entertainment. Um, it's always been for for families, and uh, but we, the stories we try to tell, like, although you know we want families and stuff like that to come, we want the stories to come across that that anybody will be able to come and watch the show. Mm. Um, mm. You know, it's it's sort of real life stories that are taking place, so anyone can enjoy them. But at the same time, you know, families can come and have a great time. Um, as well so we, 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 we're not limiting ourselves um mm. but family it, it families are at the core of what we're doing i think just it seems to be with british wrestling it is quite a like a family day out and that's mm. such a good thing to have that sort of entertainment mm. it's a bit like you know with your theater backgrounds it's similar to that, and it? it's going yeah, out to the theatre and just exactly. It's that it's that day out with with your family, and then sort of talking about it afterwards. And oh, I really yeah. love this part, and and you know, I love that part of the show. Or oh, can you believe when that happened to to so and so, and uh, and things like that. And families, like kids at wrestling, are always the absolute best thing because they will <laughs> they will do what exact the exact thing you want them to do nine times out of ten. Um, you know, they will go absolutely nuts for the good guys. They will go absolutely, they will hate the bad guys and the fiery passion. However, that one out of 10 time, they'll come out with such a snarky comment, it breaks you. <laughs> and I've seen that before. <laughs> Someone's trying to, trying to, you know, rah, right, shout at the audience. And then a kid went, it was just something stupid, like, you're stupid. And the guy in the mm-hmm. ring was just like, must hold this together. <laughs> yeah well you're stupider and then just walked away and you know they, they interact and that's where the noise comes from um mm. and that's what just makes it so enjoyable i mean it's just amazing to have kids see wrestling again mm. and kind of become more trendy because as cliche as it is like obviously kids these kids are the next wrestlers they're going to get brought yeah. up and get into wrestling and hopefully carry on this british tradition of wrestling exactly that's it it's, it's their imaginations that are, are really going to take this you know yeah above and beyond um as a as a you know I've, i'm a parent i've got two children myself um one of them's eight so she's slowly sitting down and watching wrestling with me um and it's just amazing to sort of see how she reacts to it because she reacts the exact way that you you want it to happen yeah. so you know, I mean, looking at like WWE, for example, there's there's times when as grown up, mature audiences, we sit there and go, oh, that's just really stupid. What are they doing that for? But sure, she sat there. She's so invested. She's so locked in. Um, and it, and it, it makes sense as to why they're doing it. If you see it from that, you know, just childlike you know, yeah. angle almost. Um, mm. It's a really cool thing to see because it's the, their imagination is going to take this you know above and beyond for us it's 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 like watching um like watching shrek for example um it's a it's a movie designed at kids but there's all those jokes in there based for adults but mm-hmm. the core crux and the core story of that it's for the kids 
Yeah. Have you introduced um, your children into the tapes you used to watch, like you said, the VHSs? I, I haven't yet. Um, my, my daughter, um, she's got two very specific favourite wrestlers. Okay. Um, so one of them um, is Ryan Hunter, um, who's from Blackpool. Um, he, he's going to be on um, at, at Set Sail. Um, he's, he's, you know, possibly the heart and soul of Morecambe Wrestling. He started off as a cameraman um, and he built up and he became Alpha Omega Wrestling Champion. Um, she absolutely adores him, as do a lot of kids in Morecambe. Um, and the other one she absolutely loves is Bobby Lashley. Um, very, just no apparent reason. She was just like, I really like him. I was like, who, who is he? Oh, he's called Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley's my favourite. I was like, oh, Hunter was your favourite. Like, no, they're both my favourite. Oh, okay, cool, right. Um, so, uh, and then watching WrestleMania, she was like, what's Bobby Lashley doing? I was like, he's a bad guy now. It's like, oh, I don't like Bobby Lashley anymore. <laughs> So that was that was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you ever tried getting in the ring yourself and doing a few moves? I've. Um, so while I was when I started um, ring announcing, I thought, you know what, I I, I want to understand what they're doing. Um, and then when I became the general manager, I got put in a lot of compromising situations. So I thought, well, I probably should know what I'm doing. Um, so I went to KOW's training academy um, and did a, a bunch of training matches. Um, you know, learned a lot and then did a bunch of training matches with them. So I got to wrestle um, the unhinged Will Carter, who um, is a former KOW showcase champion. Um, and that was a, a real experience. Like, he was incredibly good. Um, I got to wrestle 2 -bit, who is just making waves across the scene at the moment. Like, he to me, he's the hottest up-and-coming wrestler there is out there right now. Um, his attitude leaves a little bit of desired, um, but he's got bags of potential. Um, and that so after all that training, that led me to... Um, I got, I've wrestled twice. Once was a um, the Alpha Omega Golden Chance Rumble, where... Um, I thought I really want to, you know, I really want to be in this rumble. You know, anyone can win. This is my opportunity. Um, I got in, got on the microphone and declared myself in the rumble. Um, and it turns out that's not how you get into a rumble. Um, <laughs> so what happened was the, the the countdown rang down. I think it was number seven was due to come out. Music played and no one came out. So I thought this is my opportunity. I'm that's my spot. So I got up on stage, I had my, my wrestling gear underneath my clothes, ripped my clothes off as quickly as I could. And as I pulled my pants down, I was trying to get my, my pants over my, my boot. Um, Andre Decker came out and whacked me from behind. Um, so I was just sort of laid there on the, um, on the stage, just like unable to move for about five minutes. And then the next guy came out and I thought, oh, this is my chance, started getting up. Um, and as he came out, he, you know, I just got attacked by about four or five different people as the, on the way <laughs> to the ring. And I don't know if they, they were targeting me or if it was just a reflex of like, there's a person. Um, <laughs> you know, I think there was one moment where um, when one of the guys came out, I sort of got up to my knees and he sort of looked at me, looked at the ring, looked back at me and then kicked me so hard. I'm pretty sure my soul left my body. <laughs> um Oh, I, I wasn't I wasn't walking straight for days after that um, and the other time was for Target Wrestling um, when they ran a show in Morecambe and they they decided that I was more worthy than other people to, to, um, to get to step in their ring um, and, and be in their ring with their champion um, so I ended up in a six man tag team match um, and that was like that was my real sort of wrestling moment um, because I got the music and the, the fans and, and um, everything like that. And I, I've got a picture to this day. I'll still go back and look at it where I'm just stood there on the, on the second rope looking out over the fans and the, the smile on my face is I, the, the biggest smile on my face um, that doesn't involve my children. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the, the thing for me was that was the, that was the big moment and 
it was it was a really special, really special moment. That's very cool. Um, I don't know who does your graphics for Odyssey, but I I absolutely love like the imagery that you use. I think it looks so cool. It looks really good. Um, yeah, I, I just thought I'd point that out. I think yeah. it looks really really cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll give I'll give a shout out to our guy Brian. Um, Brian is absolutely incredible. Um, he's good. He's our tech guy as well. Um, mm. And honestly, on his day, there is absolutely no one better. Um, just in all of all of British wrestling, like I truly, truly believe that he's he's really special. Like he took um, what we wanted to encapsulate in Odyssey Pro Wrestling, like because for us, Morecambe, by the you know, it's it's a seaside town. Um, Blackpool, it's another seaside town, so we really wanted to invest in that nautical thing. Um, and he's really managed to 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 encapsulate that and and really mm. run with it. So he's he's done some really incredible work for us. Yeah, it, it looks really good. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'll thank you on Brian's behalf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cheers, Brian. <laughs> yeah, cheers, Brian. <laughs> um, how do you feel the British wrestling scene is at the moment? At the minute, um, I think it's in a it's in a really interesting place right now um, because everyone's having to start again. Like mm-hmm. it's everyone's back to go you know the 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 boards reset um i think when you look at what you know people uh, people you know progress and icw being on the wwe network that's absolutely incredible like if you'd have said that sort of thing was going to be happening even two three years ago i probably wouldn't have believed you um so that's a Mm. really interesting really interesting development and then you've got you know stalwarts of of British wrestling as well that are that they've had to reset they've had to to go back to the drawing board a little bit so um it's going to be really interesting what what happens next but then you you know you have got a lot of places that are um starting up as well so um it's it's a really interesting time because absolutely anything could happen like we could see an absolute massive boom but at the same time you know, because there's so many new places out there that it, it could spread things a little bit. Um, so it's really interesting to see what's going to happen. Mm. I I do think there is going to be a bit of a boom because, mm. like I said, it's become kind of trendy again, and people want yeah. to go out and you know, especially like family entertainment. Exactly, like with um, with with family. You know, it's that family thing. It's people have been stuck inside for the past year. You yeah. know, they want to take the family out. They want to do these things. So um, that that's one of the reasons. You know families are so important to us because they, they are the people that are going to fill the seats you know the, the, that's where we should be looking those people that have been absolutely banging their head against a wall um stuck inside for the past year you know with kids running around running pen all over those walls um they're going to want to get them out and, and get them something that they're truly going to get invested in and i truly I, I genuinely think wrestling is that yeah i mean i yeah. want to see in the next year or so uh, an independent wrestling promotion fill out the MEN or Lupo mm. Echo. That's what I want. I want it to be a big independent boom. Mm. And then hopefully, you know, Vinnie Mac notices and then brings a bit more wrestling back over to the UK like he used to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think there will be a, a big boost for independent wrestling. Um, and I think it, it can only be good, surely. Yeah, I mean, the, the good... The, the good thing about there being so much, you know, so many new promotions starting up and um, a lot of the, the older promotions being still being around is it means more work for the wrestlers. So it means that they've mm. got more of a chance to fine tune what they're doing. And, and um, that can only make them better in the long term. You know, the it, it's all about repetitions and the more repetitions and the more opportunities they get, the better they're going to be. And as they get better, more people are going to be invested. Um, so it's like it's it's that great circle that that can only make things better. Yeah, I think as well with the there's a new understanding of wrestling now, and mm. what it used to be. Um, it's like me and Kim talk. I was saying that we're hoping that there's a bit more sort of respect towards mm. what wrestling is because I think you've had that in between where you know kayfabe was still a thing mm. and then. All of a sudden, we're told it's not as it seems. 
I know there's the understanding that you know it's not as it seems there is an art mm. to it and you've got to be safe. I think there's there's definitely a lot of potential of um, good interest on in it. Mm. I think the way it's evolved is really interesting as well because you know uh, years and years ago it was you know about big people and and you mm. wanted to see those big people smash against each other. Um, you know anyone that's had wrestling figures as a kid, I'm sure they just would just smash them together. Um, you know, because that was that's just what you saw on TV. It was just two big guys smashing against each other. But over uh, over time, it's become more athletic as well. So yeah. there's a lot more of those wow moments as well. Um, and when those wow moments are, are weaved in with a, a compelling and interesting story, that's mind blowing. Do you know what I mean? If you if you if you waited for this moment for for a year in the making and, and you truly think things could explode and then someone does something that just absolutely blows your mind. You just sit there after it just going, wow. You know, mm. and that's, that's yeah. incredible. Like things are a, 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 tr a truly great place and that's, that can only impress people, which is going to yeah. be great. And the media for once is actually helping. Mm. Uh, obviously I'm fighting with my family um, and then you had the BBC series, uh, which was in Norwich, mm. uh, Step into the Ring. And then I've just seen uh, the other week, there was uh, a BB no, Channel 4, it was a show called Trip Hazard. Okay. Uh, there's a comedian, um, and she goes around different places in the UK, and she goes to a wrestling promotion as well. She steps into the ring. Mm. So it, just, it seems like wrestling's more on TV, you know, than it ever was. Yeah, I mean, you've got, like... Um... So Stephen Amell, the, the, the guy that played Arrow, um, is making a, a wrestling TV show called Heels by the looks of it. Um, and, you know, I think CM Punk has, has signed up and is going to be in it at some point. Um, one of the guys that was in the Hunger Games, um, he's in it as well. Like, So you've got like the wrestling drama ready to go mm -hmm. to, to corner that like total divas has done absolute wonders for for bringing new fans to wrestling as well mm -hmm. my, my yeah. partner isn't a, a massive wrestling fan but she's obsessed with total divas and total bellas like she she loves the bellas um same with us isn't it yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. and and that sort of oh the bellas oh the bellas are on oh daniel bryan like he's great on that on on total bellas What's yeah. he doing here? And then when you've got one of the, literally one of the best in the world that, that is able to help draw some people from that reality TV side and it, that gets more eyes on it. Um, yeah. That's absolutely incredible. Um, and then when you sort of draw it closer to home, whenever you watch um, TV shows that, that go to America or go to, you know, go to Mexico, I think the last time I saw it was... Um, so I think it was a Gordon Ramsay ITV show with Gino DeCampo and the guy from First Dates. Um, yes. And they, they, they ended the up in a Lucha yeah. Libre wrestling yeah. as well. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's just sort of becoming more widely accepted um, yeah. as an art form, which I can only get better and stronger over time. Mm. I mean, because I, I was always out of the closet of wrestling fan, mm. but there's some people <laughs> who I knew were definitely in the closet like they used to hide the little, yeah. you know, wrestling t-shirts and stuff. <laughs> now that you know, it's yeah, we're, we're being welcomed back into the world, which is which is great. Exactly, know? and the, the, a lot of kids were into wrestling when they were when they were younger. So as they sort of grown up, they're remembering things from when they were a kid. Oh, I remember that, and they'll they'll leave the channel on longer. Do you know what I mean? When mm. they, when they're skipping yeah. through and and they'll oh, oh I remember wrestling when I was a kid. We used to watch. I don't know. Oh, I could take the kids to that, you know, things like that. And it's it's nostalgia helps as well, um, because people when they were younger watched it, they're more susceptible to it when they're older. So even if they've taken a break, they'll they'll come back to it, which which tends to happen quite a lot. Um, and then you've got the sort of absolute diehard wrestling fans that are just like wrestling, 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 wrestling. <laughs> but then. They're sort of wider circle people. It's like, oh, wrestling. Oh, this person likes wrestling. Oh, I'll, I'll, sh I'll show them this. But then that's getting their eyes on it. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, there's, there's opportunities that keep creating. Yeah. Who knows where wrestling will be in a few years? Exactly. Um, so, I think one of the best things that WWE does is sends the title belt out to the to the winners of different sporting competitions. Mm, um, similar, yeah. mm. you, know, you always see, like, you know 
the Premier League winners. There's someone's got the belt. There's always one wrestling fan in the group. Yeah. Um, the Super Bowl winners. There's always one of them that's wearing and waving the belt. You know, so the and the belt. Although a lot of people are a big fan of of the, the, the current WWE title, like it's the smartest thing they can do because it's just a walking logo. Yeah. So they're putting their logo and they're the thing that's that they're most associated with in everybody's hands. Um, and I, I think that's just the smartest thing you can do. Yeah, I mean, a lot of footballers, um, especially now that are international, kind of go to the mm. the home football teams. Like, mm. you know, Seamus goes to Celtic. Seamus is a Liverpool fan. Seamus <laughs> is <laughs> um, a big Liverpool fan. Yeah, yeah and then, um, yeah, there's a few more that have kind of showed their, you know, the, mm. they get them right down to the stadium. Yeah. Like I say, which is always good. Speaking of, um, of wrestling, like football and wrestling, I have a really weird association with that. So cool. every time I go watch wrestling, in, so like every time I've gone to a WWE show, so um, I've been to Raw a couple of times. I went to um, night two of the WWE UK tournament, the first one, um, and then night two of the WWE Albert Hall NXT show. Um, and on all those occasions... I bumped into Darren Fletcher, the former oh, Manchester okay. United midfielder. Like, yeah, yeah. Every, every single time I bumped into him and we've had a quick chat. And it's just, re- I just always found it really <laughs> odd. Like, <laughs> hey, right, Darren, how's it going? You know, <laughs> it yeah, you're right. He looks for yeah. BT, now, BT now, doesn't he? I think. Wow, he's, he must be loving life then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, what did you speak about, Darren? What did you speak to him about? I was just, uh, how was the show? Are you all right? How's it going? You know, I was. If he's ever injured, I was the leg. <laughs> you know, it's always it's always a very brief chat, but I I like to think I like to hope he remembered me. Um, you know, because it was it was so odd that it was just every time I went to wrestling, oh, we'll probably bump into Darren Fletcher today. <laughs> you know? My friends who are not wrestling fans always bring up the Wayne Rooney slap. Yeah, you know, with, with Wayne Barrett. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was that, I remember that I remember watching that. I was just sort of thinking to myself, like, what is going on? <laughs> it was it was we, nuts. We were at that role. Yeah, I was gonna say we were <laughs> there, weren't we? Mm. How, what was it like? Like what was what were the what was the fact it like in, in house? Like? It, it was weird to be there yeah. and see that as well. Uh Seamus was singing You'll Never Walk Alone and the yeah. MEN was uh <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard Boo like it, but it's good. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. You knew some fool was going to laugh because they kept showing when really on like the big screen. So yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Was, oh yeah, was, like as soon as they sort of here he is, and oh, he's in that special corner seat. Yeah, it's it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, one thing that I haven't sorry touched upon is yeah. um, talking about Morgan. Yeah. You have one of the most famous people. Mm-hmm. Um, the Gypsy King in Morecambe, yes. who yes. App- apparently actually doesn't live in Morecambe, he lives outside of Morecambe. Is yeah, that, is that true? so as far as I'm aware, he lives, um, I think he lives in Holton. Is it Holton? Yeah, it's just sort of just outside of Lancaster. Okay. Um, but the area, I mean, Morecambe and Lancaster are basically the same place as far as the West <laughs> is concerned. Yeah, like you know, it's it's oh, I'm just gonna nip through at Lancaster, oh, I'll nip through at Morecambe, and you got Heacham. <laughs> which is just, you know, um, just off the side of Morecambe. So, you know, yeah, he's always, <laughs> he's always in Morecambe. So you might as well. Yeah. I was just, sorry, I was just remembering the time my partner, she was, um, she was walking, um, she was going shopping uh, with her daughters <laughs> and uh, Tyson Fury pulls up in his car outside Costa, gets out in his dressing gown, runs into Costa, grabs some coffees and then just comes back out again. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so. <fair enough. laughs> <laughs> he, did, he did walk with a cross on the beach, doesn't he? Yes, yeah. So that, over Easter, yeah. he, he he did a some sort of religious walk across yeah, the, yeah. the bay um, <laughs> because he's nuts. <laughs> um, my, my my question is is like you know has he kind of reached out because he's a wrestling fan? You know, yes. He, yeah. Has he? He's, um, he's he's not reached out yet. Um, that we're still we're still fingers crossed. Um, <laughs> the we're hoping. Um, well, I'm hoping that he sees one of our flyers and one of our posters um, that we're, we're just plastering Morecambe Bay and, and um, Lancaster and, and all the surrounding areas with um, and, and would love to be involved because we've 
I, I, I would absolutely love for Tyson Fury to come and, and, and draw the Morecambe Raffle. That's that's my goal in life. Okay. Um, because the Morecambe Raffle is a very it's a it's a big deal. Um, fans, you know, fans really care about the Morecambe Raffle. Um, if you if you look on our poster, um, in the bottom it does say that we feature the return of the Morecambe Raffle. Um, <laughs> so you know it's world famous. <laughs> <laughs> so you know who better than than the heavyweight champion of the world to come and come and draw the Morgan raffle so you know the open invite's there to him if he wants to come and do it you know give us a call and we'll, we'll happily make a ring well i think what you need is when you see his car because I'm, I'm guessing you, you know when you see you see his car yeah. every time you see his car just put a flyer under his uh, <laughs> yes. window wire. it'll be the massive range rover so just every time <laughs> you see a massive range rover just just like throw him out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I think he probably would, wouldn't he? I mean, he sounds like a nice guy. Yeah, I mean, the thing the thing with Tyson Fury that I've noticed is a lot of his, like, things he does around Morecambe just tend to be by chance. Like, he's just walking past, and then all of a sudden he's helping um, a team pick litter across the bay, or he's, you know, helping raise money here or there. Like, mm -hmm. he just does things by chance and then just carries yeah. on with his day. So I think we just have to like have someone stationed out on the bay just yeah. in case they see him. Like, hey, come over here. <laughs> you know? so, yeah. oh. He's a it's big guy as well. I've seen yeah. him. Yeah. Well, I've watched some Blackpool Tower he came in and he's he's proper tall. Yeah. yeah. I, I so Mad. when my um when my second daughter was born, um I I was coming back into the hospital the next day. Um and out comes Tyson Fury, having having just literally, he must have literally just got back from Vegas that day um, because his face was all bruised up from a fight. Um, he walks out in a suit, lean as anything. And I walk, I walk past him into the hospital and I you truly just do not realise how tall that man is. Like, just walk mm. in and then it's like, oh, oh, hi. Okay, <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, happy day. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, he's unbelievably tall. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, the fact that he went into wrestling was at the time was just it was dead weird, weren't it? But you know, what yeah. I mean? to be fair, he, he he went in straight into it, and he, he did he did all right. Yeah, exactly. Like he's he sort of he he's he's a fan, so he, he's yeah. a fan that got to live his dream. Like you can't you can't really begrudge that. Like yeah, you know, if if I was a, a world champion and, and had all this media attention, you're darn right that I would get in touch with WWE and get involved. <laughs> yeah. <in that>. like, <laughs> <laughs> so you know and, and he gave it's not like he sort of went in and just did the old oh you know I'll, I'll stand at the side and I'll, oh, I'll do a body slam on someone because that's you know that's the easy thing to learn in an afternoon he really put mm. the graft in so you've got yeah. to respect someone mm. that puts the graft in yeah, yeah so let's talk about your debut show um where is it where can you get tickets yeah let's so, let know so set sail, uh, Odyssey Pro Wrestling will be setting sail on uh, Saturday, the 7th of August. Um, you can get tickets from odysseyprowrestling.co.uk. Um, we're going to be live from the Carlton. Um, we're going to feature, you know, such guys as, as I say, Ryan Hunter and RPD, um, who, who hail from Blackpool. Um, we're going to have Craig Collins, who, in my opinion, is possibly the most underrated wrestler in Great Britain. Um, he's incredible. He just doesn't, he just wants to do his own thing. So he's not that bothered about like putting himself out there. Um, but some of the best matches I've seen live period have been, have been involved in that man. Um, two bits going to be there. He, as I, as I said earlier, one of the most, one of the best up and coming wrestlers there is out there, like give it a year. He's probably going to be all going to be everywhere. Um, we've got big guns, Joe, um, who's going to be there? Who it, I love Big Guns Joe. He's he's one of the funniest funniest wrestlers I've ever ever met, and I'm so excited to see what he's going to do. Um, I will I will give you guys this. You'll be hearing this. You'll have you'll have already heard this when this goes out, right? But I'll give you the first match that we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna announce. Okay. So it's uh it's featuring our women, um our women's match. So it's going to be Alexis Falcon. Versus Tonga, versus Gia Adams, versus Lizzie Evo in a in a fatal four way match. That's that's going to be the first match on the show. Wow. So yeah. that's going to be incredible. Like 
get, getting ready for the hype of of uh, I've seen you know places that we're going to have uh, Lizzie versus Alex. Um, that's going to be incredible. But then you throw Tonga into the mix, anything mm. can happen. You throw Jira into the mix. <sighs> I, yeah. I, I, honestly, like it's going to be incredible, <laughs> and that's just off one match. God. And, and then, <laughs> well, I, I just love how far female wrestling. Some of the best wrestlers are female right yeah. now. Mm. Unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, Alexis Falcon is literally lighting the the UK up. Like, yeah. Seeing her on the WWE Network is absolutely deserved, and it's something I truly think we're only going to see more of. Yeah. Um, I, I, in Morecambe, she's so beloved. And honestly, I, I didn't think there was a bad bone in that, in that girl's body. Um, and then I've seen her in other places, um, and she's absolutely incredible as, as, as a bad guy, like really excellent work, really getting the fans against her. Um, so to see someone that versatile is, is absolutely incredible. Um, you've got someone like Lizzie, who I think she could knock out half our guys. Like, so, you know, <laughs> that, that, that element, that edge is going to be incredible. Um, Tonga, she's, it's that attitude she's got, I think, that gives her that intangible. Um, she truly thinks she's better than everyone else. And when you think that, then that, that sort of, gives you that little extra gusto to be better. Um, mm. And then I truly think G is the, the dark horse in this match as well. Like, she could change the, 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 the way the match is going to go in an instant. Um, so it's, it's a truly unpredictable match and truly is going to be four of the best UK women um, that are out there. True, the best, true, four of the best wrestlers out there as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a hell, hell of an opener. Mm. Um, yeah, have you, is there, have, let me get a sound. Uh, are you, have you looked into like streaming at all? Um, it's something we're considering. Um, we, we're going to look at putting stuff on YouTube, I think. Um, mm. we might, we might not put full shows on there to begin with. We're, we're probably just going to, um, put some matches here and there to, 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 to wet. The taste buds of people um mm. but it's it's in the conversation um because i think some of the matches that we're gonna put on really do need to be seen yeah um so we're gonna be recording everything so we're gonna have the footage and uh, we're just not sure how we're gonna put it out there yet mm -hmm. right so i mean i'm assuming this show goes well which i'm, I'm sure it will what's next for odyssey what what are your big plans what do, what do you want to do um <sighs> Right now, what I want to do is make it a must-see show, mm -hmm. wherever it is. Um, Morecambe and Blackpool are, are, are places where we really want to bunker down and, and make into really special wrestling towns. Um, Morecambe truly is a special town as it is um, within itself. We just we would love more people to see that. Um, yeah. The atmosphere in Morecambe is incredible. Um, a slight tangent, but so in the in the sort of final year of Alpha Omega, um, Zach Gibson came to to Morecambe um, and wrestled Ryan Hunter um, for the Golden Chance Trophy, um, and <laughs> it was one of my, so as a as a ring announcer at the time, I was I was buzzing. So he just won the UK tournament. Um, he was absolutely incredible. One of my favourites. Everything he does with the microphone is incredible. Yeah. Um, and myself and um, my announcing partner in Morecambe, Silent Mark, um, we, we chatted and, and he would um, do all the, 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 the fa fan favourites and I would do the, the, the bad guys so that the, the fans could sort of... That would be like a... It would give them an indication of, of who to cheer for. Um and as I do, I chat backstage and I, you know, chatted to him and, and got his details. And he said, you know, I might do something, I might not, we'll see out there. And I was like, all right, cool, that's that's absolutely fine. Um, got in the ring, championship match, both guys are in the ring. I thought this is this is it. I'm about to I'm about to announce a WWE superstar. The the six-year-old kid in me is buzzing right now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, follow matches for the golden chance trophy. Um, introducing the challenger. He is the whip 
microphone gets taken off me and he does his own introduction. And I'm, I'm stood there watching him just thinking, no! <laughs> and now he's run off to America, so I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, but yeah, so that so uh, he was in Morecambe, um, and then after the show, he puts out a tweet um, saying, "Wow, that was incredible. That was that was really special. It's still real in Morecambe." Um, and then Rockstar Spud Drake Maverick replied to that saying, "Yeah, Morecambe, Morecambe's a special place." And when when guys signed to the WWE that are performing in front of incredible numbers of people have that to say about Morecambe fans. That, that's when you know something special. Yeah. Um, mm. And we just would love more people to see that for Morecambe. Um, and the same with Blackpool. There's such an untapped riches of, of um, people in Blackpool that we would absolutely love for them to see it. Like having, having watched RPD's fights um, on YouTube and the stuff that he posts, like the noise that they make for that man is absolutely incredible. Um mm he's never really had that true moment to shine in Blackpool um, as a wrestler. So to, to, to give him that opportunity to get, take that chance to let the people of Blackpool see someone like that in the ring is going to be really special. Um, yeah. That's what, that's the immediate future. Um, after that, who knows? Honestly, the sky's the limit. Like we, we just want to, to put on an incredible show. Um, we want families to love it. And we just want the fans in general to love it, really. Yeah, RB Davis is so good. And he's such a nice guy. Mm. And like I said, there's just so many wrestlers that just are so good that have probably not even been seen yet. Mm. And that's so. that's what we want to do. Like, we don't want to... There, there might be times when, you know, big name here comes to Markham or comes mm. to Blackpool. But it's it's not about putting one person in for one occasion. It's, it's about building stories. It's about building investment. Um, and these people that don't really get that opportunity to shine are really, they really give it that extra bit as well. So they really, you know, create that. It, it makes the fans part of the show. Um, and it, we just, it'd be amazing to give that platform to people to, they really, you know, I got to hear because of what I did in an Odyssey, Odyssey Pro Wrestling. Mm. Would, that's my dream. You know the WWE and all that sort of stuff. I I'm never I'm never gonna have anything to do with them. Let's let's you know let's face facts. Like as much as I'd love to be a writer for WWE or be an announcer, I'm never gonna do that. But if my friends and my people that I, I fought for and, and wanted to see do well go on to WWE, even, you know NXT UK and all that stuff. There's so many opportunities now that will yeah. I'll feel like that to me is job done. Mm. sky's the limit exactly <laughs> <laughs> well, all we gotta do is set sail first <laughs> <laughs> yeah. other questions John do you have any um, who was your favourite wrestler growing up we asked that um, for me my favourite wrestler was Edge um, so this mm. this year this, this past mm. two years as far as WWE is concerned has been absolutely buzzing um, <laughs> yeah I, I loved Edge growing up, so I was a huge, huge fan of the, the Edge and Christian. Like, Edge and Christian are my favourite tag team of all time ever. Um, I really got into them when they were doing the, um, just when they were, you know, the stuff with Kurt Angle um, and the kazoos and, and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> like, I, oh, I wet myself as a kid and it was always amazing to see. And then, you know, it's the, the ladder matches with the with the Hardys and the Dudleys, like, mm. I would watch those on repeat, like, and yeah, the moments in that match, but they all built and they all told a story. Um, and then seeing Edge's career, you know, pan out from there into um, the rated R superstar and everything that he did um, there from being a good guy, being a bad guy. He always told the best stories. Um, so for me, that's why I loved Edge. So when he came back last Royal Rumble, not well, last year's Royal Rumble, Although I'd seen all the rumours, I, I tried to put it out of my mind because there was no way Edge was coming back. Like he had a, a neck injury that killed someone. Mm. It would have been, you know, it just didn't feel like it was doable. Um, so that moment when Edge came back, I absolutely lost my mind. Like it was, <laughs> it was so good. 
Um, but yeah, Edge was Edge for me. It's always been Edge. Not bad, so. Um, so Markham is the place to uh, to watch. Um, I, I look forward to your your debut event. I'm sure you are as well. Yeah, um, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit excited. A little bit excited. Um, but yeah, set set sail. It's as I say, it's the culmination of of three years worth of work. Yeah. Um, so when you truly put all that time and energy into something, um, I I don't know how I'm going to feel in that moment, and I'm I'm that excites yeah. me. Like, <laughs> yeah, that moment's going to be really cool. Well, uh, thank you for coming on and uh, and sharing your stories about Morgan and about your wrestling. And yeah, it's it's been it's been a really good uh, really good chat. Thank you for thank you for having yeah. me. I've really thank you. It. I, I'd love to come back on and, and chat to you um, closer to November when when we come to Blackpool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. That'd be, that'd be amazing. Yeah, well, it'd be interesting to see where you've come from from now till November and how much you've mm. grown. Yeah, yeah, that'd be that'd be amazing. Yeah, um, we'll put all your details on our uh, social media and you know YouTube and everything. Yeah, amazing. Um, yeah, and uh, Markham, let's, let's let's be having you. Yeah, let's be having you. Let's, <laughs> so set sail August seventh. Get tickets from www.odysseyprowrestling.co.uk. Yeah. Thank you for watching, everyone. Uh, thank you for my guest and my co-host, the Scottish stud, John Dugan. Thanks. <laughs>